if, if you look at the CSV, you see that it has a, a date, a station, temperature, and snow. And then we have several values that we want to insert. Um, and if you'd like to distribute that database with our application, uh, we can just do a code to generate it. So I'm going to show you what I wrote mostly to generate the, the exercise before. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the, the points uh, in this. All right. So, you know what? Let's place it in the, so it in the weather project. Um, okay. So if you look at the weather project, we have this thing, right? So this is package uh, weather and we have the, the station and we have a date and then we have some records, which is the database records, uh, etc. And then there, there are some other utilities. In general, when I'm trying to automatically generate data, I'm trying to generate only this part and put it as a file and all the other code with the sync.mutex and the data equal, etc., etc. This this is code that it's uh, not related to this one. Okay. Um, so I have package main and usually what I do here is also I'm telling it to be ignored by the build. Okay. Uh, so when I'm doing a uh, go build here, uh, it will work even though you see that my uh, editor is a bit confused because the package here is main, but in uh, db.go it's, it's package weather. So you can use this directive. This, this, this I do a lot when I'm writing uh, all kinds of utility scripts, you may call them, uh, to help me out, which are not part of the package. But when you do go run on this file, uh, go is going to run. So what we're going to import is encoding CSV and MP. NOS. And now I'm looking at my data um, and how it looks. So I have something like this. Okay, so I, I need to generate a file with the var definition and something like this. Okay, so I can say that the header, and I'm using a backtick to uh, generate um, it's a good idea to right to do these kinds of comments right if you remember uh, in the weather.pv it was we had the same thing this is what protocol buffer is generating and it gives us a little bit of more information about what is the source you can add this stuff as well if you want yeah. but just make sure that people know that you know this is uh, not something that they, they should touch manually and then I need to be in the package weather that I want. And I need to import. And here I'm just going to import time because that's the only thing I'm going to use in this file. And this is the beginning of here. Okay, so this is the header that I'm going to write and the raw template is, uh, you know what, I can put the func date as well if I want to make it. Uh, 
like this. So I I'm going to copy this function verbatim uh, to the template as well. Okay, so it's a function that we're going to use in our code. So now, now I have my templates ready, and now I need to go and work with them. We start, and usually when I'm debugging stuff, I'm starting by reading from standard input and writing to standard output. And once I'm happy with what I have, I switch it to the actual file names. So I can do an open and an other thing. But for now, this is uh, good. Um, what happened to my auto completion? Okay. Okay, so I'm reading a row. You can even panic here because this is a utility script. You know, we don't don't really care and panic provides a nice uh, uh, trace back. So this is nice. Um, and then I can do date and station and temperature and snow. I, I like to do it like this to give it to give them uh, names. So it will be easier for me to see what's going on. Um, you can work with just the offsets. But for us humans remembering what is zero, what is one, it's better done in one place and then I can work with the names, which is much, much better for me. And the date itself, um, I need to break it down even more. So the date fields strings dot split dates. And I can do this. Then again, year, month, and day, dates. Okay, so at the beginning, um, I can print the header. And here I can do fmt.print. Uh, printf and I have the row template right so I need the year the month the day and the station and you notice for the station I use the percent Q you remember the percent Q what does it do anyone Prints out the string with the quotes, I believe. Right, it prints out the string with the quotes, but it is even better because if I have a, um, uh, let's do something. Uh, uh,
uh, you see it's going to to do the right thing and adds the the uh, the backslashes if I have a quote inside. So when you're generating code, you always need to think about all these escapes and other things, and the percent Q is going to do it for you. So uh, every time you uh, every time you need to work with a string, you use the percent Q, and the other values I'm using the percent S. Okay, so I'm printing the station and then uh, the temp and the snow. And at the end, I need to print a new line. Date. So let, let's uh, have a look. We do go run uh, gen db. We'll say, take the data from uh, weather.csv. Uh, and we have a runtime error. Hmm? In line 40. Uh-huh. Oh, I know why. Anyone know, guess why? And this is the first line. So the date is just the word date, doesn't have uh, dashes inside. So we need to skip the first line. Uh, Okay, so now we have a panic on EOF. Okay, so uh, we can break. Okay, so now, uh, this is how the code...